Hey gem lovers, welcome in. Thank you for being here and checking out my video. This week we're going to talk about lapis lazuli, which is arguably one of the most sought after gemstones of all time when we get into the history of it. And it's also a gemstone that's considered to bring truth, honesty, and serenity to your life. My name is Jaina. Please make sure you like the video. Feel free to share it. Go to my YouTube channel, Jaina's Journeys, and make sure you subscribe there for more things, all things actually, gemstones, jewelry, you name it. So lapis is a gem that's been used in jewelry, in carvings, in um, amulets, and so much more artworks for thousands upon thousands of years. Lapis, it gets its name from two different areas. So one is the Latin word for stone. Um, and the other comes from lazuli, which is the Arabic word lazward, which is for azure, which means blue, essentially. So you've got blue stone. Lapis is this intense electric blue, and this is kind of my little piece of lapis for you to check out. You can see how stunning and almost celestial the color is. It really is captivating. But lapis is a really interesting gem because it's not just made up of one mineral per se. It's got this deep blue, which is gonna be your lazarite. Then you have this cloudy area, which is actually white cal calcite. You're gonna have diap diopside in there. You're gonna have sparkly pyrite and so many other more minerals. So lapis is really a combination of a lot of things. This deep blue stone actually will also include kind of flecks of mica, which have been referred to kind of as giving it a starry night. So have you ever seen that picture of a starry night where it's this electric blue and then all of a sudden this golden shimmer? Almost kind of looks like the Milky Way. And that's what lapis brings to the forefront and why it's been desired for so long is because it has such a unique and different look. Now lapis has always been associated with royal blue and many people believe that that's where kind of the terminology came from because it was associated with royalty. It got tied back to royal blue. Mining for lapis is believed to have been occurring in the northeastern province of Afghanistan since as early as 7,000 BC. This is a gemstone that's lasted the test of time. Now lapis is cherished by many cultures and has been since the very beginning. We're talking Egyptians, Babylonians, Minoans, Chinese, Greek, Romans, and more. Egyptians actually believed that this gemstone came from the heavens and would provide protection into the afterlife. So they used it in things like statues or in like tomb ornaments, in jewelry, or even in burial masks. Now, one of the most famous instances of this would actually be King Tut. He was buried in a burial mask that was made of turquoise, carnelian, and gold, of course, with lapis. So that's one of the more famous instances. Also, it is rumored that Cleopatra's famous blue eyeshadow was ground up lapis, and that's what she used to create her eyeshadow. Also, Marco Polo, a lover of hers, wrote about lapis mines as early as 1271. So again, we know that throughout time, this gemstone has really been predominant in history. There is a poem called um, Gilgamesh. Sumerians spent time, and in this poem, they were traveling back and forth from Asia to their back home in order to mine the stone and bring it back to their area. And when they discovered some ancient mines in lower Iraq that the Sumerians had there, there were as many as over 6,000 almost like hand-carved statues from little birds and deers to beads and jewelry, all found within that tomb. Now, lapis was often placed in tombs alongside the deceased. It wasn't just in Africa, it was also in Asia and Europe that they were found constantly throughout the tombs. Ancient Romans sometimes referred to lapis as sapphire, and you actually see this in the Bible, in references in the Bible. Buddhists had always recommended and believed that the lapis stone was to bring inner peace, that it would bring freedom from negative thought, and they often used the stone as well. And during the Renaissance age, Catherine the Great and endured an entire room in her palace. So she had a room of lapis. The fireplaces, the doors, the mirrors, everything. Lapis. Would have been an incredible room, huh? In the Middle Ages, painters actually ground up lapis and would use it in this deep blue paint that they would call ultramarine. Now you see this in like the robes of Mary of Nazar Nazareth in different churches. You also see it on the Sistine Chapel, on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Now, meanwhile, in South America, pre-Columbian cultures were also using this. The Incas were carving lapis carvings and trading them. And they were actually getting their lapis from a mine that we now know was in Argentina and Chile. 
Lapis is typically found where there's limestone, or it can be found in these giant separate boulders as well. But this stone is now kind of the most coveted of this stone in the world has always really come from the regions in Afghanistan and Pakistan, and they're still kind of considered the best quality in the world today. But the Argentinian mine also produces some really beautiful, striking blue colors of this gem. Lapis has also been found in the US. It's actually been found in California, in Colorado, and in Arizona. It's been found in some regions of Canada, as well as Chile and Russia. But through and through, it is the Providence in the northeastern corner of Afghanistan that has this mountainous bare area where there's not really any vegetation, where it's really just about this gemstone mine and the mountain peaks go up to 17,000 feet in the air. And people come just to seek out lapis. And that mine to this day is the mine that has produced the most beautiful electric blue lapis in the world. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the metaphysical properties of this gemstone. And as we get into this section of the video, um, I appreciate you being here. Please remember that if you are suffering from any ailment whatsoever, you should always seek the advice of a medical professional. This is not sound medical advice. This is just sharing with you some of the metaphysical properties and what's considered to be a part of Lapis. Lapis is truly all about your inner truth. It's about love, it's about positive magic, it's about connecting relationships and really bringing through manifestations. Now, Lapis is believed to be a great gemstone for stimulating wisdom and good judgment. Lapis can aid in the bonding of your relationships as well. So be it relationships of love or friendship, if you need to kind of reconnect, this can aid in helping you express your feelings and emotions and bringing harmony to your relationships. It really brings dignity to the front runner of all relationships. Lapis Lazuli reminds us of the power of the spoken word. It's one of the best stones when it comes to opening up your throat chakra and balancing your throat chakra. It encourages your inner truth to come forward, clears problems that you may have created from holding back your own truth. So if you're someone who doesn't always speak your mind or you hold back your inner truth, this can help get rid of that blockade and take away any stress or anger that kind of is caused by that. Lapis encourages you to take charge of your life. It really reveals that inner truth and it encourages you to have that self-awareness and self-expression self without holding back or compromising who you are. Now, if there's any repressed anger or difficulties in your throat from holding something back, whether it's a form of abuse or anything else, it's also gonna help you release that so you can kind of get that off your plate and clear that old energy out. Lapis is said to bring enduring qualities of honesty and compassion to the forefront of your personality, which these are all incredible aspects to think about. Lapis is also said to help open up the third eye chakra, and it's said to aid in connecting you to your spiritual guardian. So it can also aid in protecting you from any ne negative energies or psychic attacks as well, but Lapis is said to help you with your own personal spiritual connection and growth. It is a powerful crystal for activating higher mind and enhancing your intellect abilities, but also to know those truths. Again, everything kind of goes back to your inner truth. And in doing that, it can enhance your memory or your dreams and so many other things. Lapis is believed to help aid with stress relief as well. Think about this electric blue color. It's calming, it's got peace and serenity, and that's what Lapis is said to bring to your life. Placed over the third eye chakra, it's also believed that this can help expand your awareness, open your horizons and your consciousness. Lapis is believed to have that calming factor. So if you suffer from frustration or anger, agitation, it brings calming to you. It's a stone that can help you deal with emotional turmoil. Whether you suffered some form of an abuse or just your emotions are all over the place, this can help you heal and find inner peace. It's said to bring both to you. Now, the calming energy of Lapis is often used um, for inner child work or for perhaps suffering from an addiction or drug or alcohol abuse, it can be used there as well. It will help overcome anger and rage. And most importantly, it helps you to take responsibility for yourself. So rather than blaming others for missed opportunities, Lapis is actually gonna help you take responsibility for yourself and your own action. I think that's really a great quality of this particular gem. It's all about those truths, those inner kind of awareness, self-awareness, and acceptance of where you are. 
Also, lapis in the workplace is said to attract and promote success um, with lasting recognition within your field. So it's always a great gemstone to have laying around your office. Last but not least, as far as physical ailments go, and again, this is not a medical advice in any way, shape, or form. If you are suffering from any ailments, emotional, physical, you should always get the advice of a medical professional. But I do like to share with you the legend and lore behind these particular gems. Now, physically, it's said to be great with migraines, with shingles, with sleep apnea, with chronic pain, um, with any dental pain, dizziness, ear infections. Um, aches and pains in general, asthma, headache, migraine relief, and immune system strengthening. So as always, I want to say thank you for being here and thank you for tuning into my video. Please make sure you like, share, subscribe to my channel on YouTube, and I'll be back again next week with another gemstone. But I hope you have a fabulous week and I'll see you again soon.